We're going to open our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 to 11. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Ten. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone. Woe. Woe. Another one for the word woe is cursed. Anyone that is alone is a cursed person. The Bible tells us that when we are alone, it's a sign that that person is a cursed person. You don't have anybody. I don't have anybody. Nobody is around you. It means you are living in a curse. So for, he said, for if the fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him, cursed is him that is alone. When he falleth, for he had not another to help him up. I'm teaching on the message of titled Men, the destiny helpers. Men, the destiny helpers. Men, I think, the destiny helpers. Men, Luke chapter 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, and shake it together, and run over. Shall men, look it, on the line that place. Men, Give into your bosom. Shaman. Give into your bosom. Shaman. Give to your bosom. Men, the destiny helpers. When God wants to help every man, He sends men. That is why I've never seen a child fall from heaven. God. Intentional did it in such a way that when anybody's coming to this world, that child will have people to help that child. A child is born by two people, at least there are two people to help that child grow. That's why God does not allow it. God has the power. Because it's possible that maybe in the midnight, when you remember to just appear from anywhere. No. Because God knows that everybody needs help. So the moment you are coming into this world, at least you have two people to help you. And those are your parents. At least two people to help you. See, many of us who don't know the importance of men or people in our lives. And that's why we don't take importantly our relationships. We don't know how important. See, let me tell you, the most important thing in your life after God are your relationships. Nothing is more important. After God, what is the most important in your life are your relationships. But many of us, we don't know how important they are and that's why we suffer. You say, Pastor, my problem is money, money. The problem is not money that is your problem. Your problem is that you don't have any viable relationship. You don't have any, you are not connected to anybody that can help you. Sir, I have been on this point. Nobody to help me because you didn't connect. Some of us pray. God send me this near pass. Send me. They are not coming, they are not going to jump down. You are going to intentionally cultivate relationships. It is out of those relationships that your destiny help us will be sprouting out. Not that they will jump from anywhere. It is from the relationship you build. Connections that you build over time. Out of them, then destiny help us to begin to come out. You, there is no prayer you will pray. In Luke chapter 2, 52, the Bible says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. His favor increased with God and man. One of the ways you know that you have been favored is that people will be showing up for you. If you see anybody blessed in this life because there are people helping that person. If you see anybody doing well, there are people helping that person. If you see people who are outstanding, not that as if uh, you can be talented. If you don't have people, you will waste. You will waste. 
You can never fulfill dreams and destiny without people. If there are no destiny and past that can help you, you, you can be talented and waste away. Even if you're a fertile man or woman, you can't reproduce alone. You cannot reproduce alone. Never. You need people. So the Bible says, a man who is alone, how do you know that a man is living in a curse? Is alone. He has nobody. That's why that man had to suffer for 38 years. See, as long as there are no destiny here past your life, your journey of suffering will be unlimited. Many of us will mess up with our relationship so easily. We mess up with our destiny. We are fighting all of our destiny helpers. Life will be so hard and frustrating without destiny helpers. Hard. Life can never be sweet without men to help. Men who can help you. People, especially Christians, think that destiny helpers fall from heaven. Destiny helpers are human beings that God connects to you. Some of you are here now. I don't even talk to your parents. Some of you are here now. Everybody, your company, they are not good. And you don't know it was a divine orchestration. Some of you now, the office where you are working, nobody is talking to you. Everybody is bad. You are the only one. You are already under a curse. In the church, nobody knows you. You don't talk to anybody. In your house, nobody talks to you. Nobody knows your name. It means you are under a curse. Who is going to help you? Where do you get your own destiny helpers from? Where would they come from? You think they will jump down from heaven? You are on campus. You are about graduating. No viable relationship. Nothing. No quality relationship. You are living in a community, living in a city, five years, and you have built no reasonable relationship with anybody. And you are wondering, and you are praying that life is life will be difficult too. Very, very. And there's no hope that it will get better. As long as you don't understand how to connect with destiny helpers. Now, let me tell you, who are destiny helpers? Destiny helpers are people or someone who is able, who is willing, who has what it takes to be part of your success or your placement. That doesn't help. He's able, he's willing, he's ready. To be part of your success and your upliftment. Who is a destiny helper? Somebody who is willing to use their influence to help you get your desired goals. Their influence, their integrity, their connection, their wisdom, their exposure, their money. Who is a destiny neighbor? Somebody that is willing to sacrificially transform your life. That's a destiny neighbor. Relationship is the platform that presents your destiny helpers. Relationship or relationships are the platforms that present your destiny helpers. Relationship. I'm an introvert. That's why I don't relate to people. That's why I don't talk to people. Even when you give birth to a child, the child must sound, must cry. He must have a way to communicate. Let us know that you are alive. If you cannot communicate, you are as good as a dead person. You are a dead person. You may be living, but if you don't know how to communicate, you are finished. That's why when you give birth to a child, the child does not communicate by crying that I'm alive. They will beat that child until the child cries. I don't think I know that she's dead or they, they still bet. The child must communicate that I am alive. I'm here. Must cry. He must hear the cry. And once the baby comes, I don't think the doctor begins to hit the child. They will hit the child and hit the, you, the way they will hit the child is more than the way you'll be afraid that the bone will break. Because if you are not talking, you are a dead person. I will beat you until you communicate. So they will hit the child until the child begins to cry. They're there. I am here. I'm alive. It's communication. So you may be deaf and dumb. You can see that people who are deaf and dumb, you can see many of them are doing great. Why? Because they have ways to communicate. They have mediums 
of communication. Because if you cannot communicate, you are dead. Because it's your communication that you use to maintain relationships in your life. You can talk, and you're not communicating. You're, you're not using it. That you can talk. So the issue of whether the language is not even the issue. You have to find a way to communicate with people that God has channeled into your life. You even see some people say, I don't need anybody. I, I only need God. You are still a cursed person. Only God. When God wants to bless you, he brings the blessing through, through people. In fact, it can be somebody that you hate their face. Whereas your destiny is in the hand of that person. Maybe younger than you, but your destiny is in the hand of that person. You may have more qualification, but your destiny is in the hand of, in the pocket of that person. Maybe in the hand of that person. And you hate the person. Have you not destroyed yourself? As a pastor, I pastor people who came to me. When things were bad, you look at me, you know, many years outside ministry. You won't know we are going anywhere. You won't look at us, you write us off. I, I once pastor somebody look at me and say, Pastor, I don't need anything from you. I'm only here to help you. That word rings in my head every day. In fact, that word became one of the reasons that I made up my mind that as long as Jesus is not back, I will succeed in your normal measure. That that person must regret it. You will see me like this and be crying. You will see me. You will be crying. You will be weeping. I made up my mind. He said, I don't need anything from you. It's one of the most grievous words that anybody can say to anybody. This is the habit that some of us have. What, what does he have that, that I don't have? What, what do you, what, what are you saying? Excuse me, sir. What are you saying? Your classmate got become the president. What are you saying, sir? He, you, he may not be the last in the class, but he may, he's the one that's going to be the president. This girl that is begging you now might be the wife of the governor, might not be the governor. Because you have one Android phone at the time, there was a time in life, Blackberry, if you have Blackberry, you're on top of the world. We are Blackberry of this world. You now look down at somebody who didn't have Blackberry at that time. Even the iPhone you have now, something is coming that will be more than iPhone very soon. And I'm telling you that people cannot afford iPhone now. But when that one comes, they may own the company. They may own the company. <laughs> Somebody that doesn't look like it. Your greatest asset or blessing you can have, apart from God, are viable or quality relationships in your life. Quality. Quality. You don't lack money or capital. What you lack is quality or viable relationships. Quality. You don't have good ones. Just struggles. Strugglers. People are going nowhere. No destination. We are not going far. We're just hanging out with them. In Genesis 13, verse 5, and Lot also, who went with Abraham, because of his connection with Abraham, Genesis 13, verse 5. And Lord also, who went with Abraham, had flocks. He was a nobody. But because of his connection with Abraham, went, he went with a hard flocks and house and tents. He became big at a point, the Bible said, where the work could not contain him and Abraham. They had to go their separate ways. He was so rich, Abraham was so rich. Why? He was rich because he connected with a blessed man. Abraham was the one carrying the blessing. He followed him. By the result of him connecting with his destiny helper, he had everything that his destiny helper had as well. Until he disconnected, began to have issues with him. Began to have issues. But he became nothing. He had nothing. Latter days of his life. Why? Because it disconnected. Many of us, we are always fighting people, fighting your destiny helpers. You fight your landlord, you fight your class rep, you fight your supervisor, you fight your boss, 
You fight everybody. Everybody is your fight, you are a fighter. <laughs> when you are in that state, you have problem with your pastor. When you are in Lagos, you have problem with your pastor. When you are in Mother's Church now, you have problem with me. Now you are going about telling everybody all the pastors are evil. <laughs> everybody, you see people like that, all the pastors are bad. I have been there. The problem is that they are, <laughs> they are fighters. They don't know how to maintain any relationship. Can't maintain any viable relationship. In the company, they hear your noise. You are shouting. You are locking somebody up. <laughs> your destiny helper. Stop fighting your destiny helpers. No one is perfect. Nobody is perfect. You have to understand that. The the destiny helper that God is pushing are pushing into your life. They are not perfect. Many of us are so bad with our relationships. You are not good at building good relationships. See, you have to learn how to build good relationships. If you want to enjoy, see. Good relationship can give you anything. Can give you anything you can ever desire in this life. Good relationships. Quality relationships. Viable relationships. Can give you anything you ever want in this life. Some of you think you have relationship. But all your relationships are just at the outer layer. You know there are three levels of relationships. Three levels of relationships. First one. Outer layer relationship. Inner layer relationship. Innermost layer. Outer layer. Some of you, you can't, you can't build. That is, we don't meet outside. We don't meet outside. Nothing much. Nothing much. You can't build it to the point that begin to take you to the city room. City room of the house. Cannot talk. Later I say, come, come. This is how to talk. I want to discuss it in my bedroom. That is innermost. There's nothing. You see secret things. You see things that I cannot tell people. But many of us, in our relations, people have seen you. They, they don't allow you more than the outer layer into their lives. And if it's that outer layer, they can't do much for you. It's outer layer help they give to you. Not in Amos layer. In Amos layer, they, they will do everything. They can sacrifice anything for you. Outer layer relationship, that's what they are building. You don't know how you can build a relationship to the point that you become so close, viable yourself. You are taking seriously yourself. So important. So some of why we have said this. How do we now connect with our destiny help us? How do I build Bible relationships with my destiny help us? Say, Lord, let me increase in wisdom. Let me increase in favor with God and man. You're not talking. Say, Heavenly Father, let me increase in wisdom, in favor with God and man. If you are not increasing in favor with man, it means your struggle and suffering is increasing. Your suffering will be increasing. So as Jesus was growing, he was increasing in wisdom, in stature, also, most importantly, in favor. Favor is what makes people, compels people to help you. Favor. It is to the level of your favor that men will help you. It is to that level that will help you. If the level of your favor that you have grown it to is just level 10,000, there's no help anybody will do for you more than 10,000 level of help. That's the level. So Jesus increased in favor with God and man. So as he was growing in stature, he wasn't just growing in stature. He was growing in favor. He was growing in wisdom with God and man. Now, how do I connect to my destiny helpers? Number one, be spiritual. Romans 8, 13 to 14. For if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Be spiritual. Yes, you are not born again. Of course, you are not born again. You can't be talking about spirituality. To be spiritual is not just coming to church. But you can't be spiritual and not come to church. You can't be spiritual and not read your Bible. You can't be spiritual and not have a prayer life. You can't be spiritual and you're not a kingdom promoter. 
You can't be spiritual, you're not winning souls. You can't be, because you are winning souls, you are connecting already with people. You are connecting. You are connecting with people. You can't be spiritual and bring shame to the name of the Lord. So you have to be spiritual. You have to do everything possible to have a good relationship with your father, God. Until then, you will not be able to recognize good people because not everybody that comes into your life is going to be an asset. Because when devil wants to destroy somebody, he sends people. And when God wants to make something, he sends people. One of the ways you can decipher, we can know who is this person, is when you are spiritual. You have a relationship with God. You are led by the Holy Spirit. When the person comes into your life, you have an idea that you may not hear much, but you have to know that, man, this person is coming to my life. Let me be careful. This person looks decent. This person, ah, let me help this person. Let me not take this person for granted. For instance, I don't take anybody for granted. But there are people that when you see them, you know that this one is an evil person. I should run from this person. You will know all of these things when you are not spiritual. There are people that come into your life to waste your destiny. Whereas there are people that come into your life to make your destiny. So you have to be spiritual to know all of these things. So the first thing you do to be able to connect with destiny helper or destiny helpers is to be spiritual. Tell somebody, are you listening to the pastor this morning? Say it to other person. Are you hearing what the pastor is saying this morning? Tell him, be spiritual. Tell her, be spiritual. Be spiritual. Yes, that first thing. Second thing, be an asset. Genesis 39, 46. We are reading NLT. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph. He had a spiritual life when he began to read from the beginning. Giving him success in everything he did. Potiphar noticed this. This pleased Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. Verse 5. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except that kind of food to eat. Joseph was a very handsome, well-built young man. Now listen to this. What can we learn from that? Be an asset. An asset cannot be ignored. If you are an asset, you cannot be ignored. Invest in yourself. Be sound. Be intelligent. Have something to offer that cannot be ignored. When you are an asset, you will attract destiny helpers. Please, refuse to be a liability. You have complaints in your mouth, excuses in your mouth. Why you shouldn't do this? Why you didn't go do that? Why you didn't do that? Kill the excuses. Become an asset. Increase your capacity as an asset until you became noticeable. In verse 3, where we read now, but the Potiphar noticed something in Joseph. He noticed it. That this boy is even from the rest. Even though he's a slave, there's, there must be something about this child, this boy. He drew him closer. What will make people that are better than you to draw you closer and begin to show interest in your endeavor is when they find out that you are an asset. You have something that they need. You are doing something that they cannot do for themselves. They see that you know something they don't know. You can do something so well that they can't do it. They don't know why people can do it for them. So, the Potiphar noticed something in Joseph and he began to draw him close. Excuse me, sir. Don't go about doing what everybody is doing and you are dancing that you are invoked. That's a path to failure. That's a path to live alone. Everybody is singing the video song. Are you, are you supposed to be singing a song? How, how much will you put in your pocket? Does that make you an asset? Is that what you need now? You love to sing. Why don't you look at the kind of music, gospel music you're going to do? 
You're wasting your time memorizing that kind of song so that I can sing among the crowd. Crowd and non-entities. Crowd and failure. When you see crowd, you see failure. Everywhere, you don't see everybody on the ground. What everybody is doing, you have seen failure there. You don't see a standing where you see crowd. You can't do what everybody is doing and, and think that you become noticeable. You know what everybody knows and you expect yourself to be noticeable and attract destiny and pass. No! Joseph knew what others didn't know. He had a sound relationship. He built capacity. Build your capacity until you cannot be ignored. Until you become noticeable. Everywhere. And destiny and pass will look for you. Though he was a slave, he was promoted. Because he was an asset, he was promoted. Stop saying that they are doing politics. Of course, they won't do politics before. They, they won't do politics. There are politics everywhere. They have to ask themselves, who do you think I do better among the five? We need one among the five. No, I don't, I'm not looking for the eldest. I'm not looking for the youngest. I'm not, I just want the best. Asset, be an asset. Excuse me, sister. Be an asset. Invest in yourself. Invest in your mental capacity. Invest in your spiritual life. Invest in every area of your life. Spend money to know more, to be better. Spend time to read. Spend time to learn. Spend time to polish yourself. Spend time to practice. He was promoted. Why? Because he was an asset. He was in charge of the property. He was in charge of the business of the man. He was in charge of the family of the man. He was in charge of other, other slaves and other people in the, in the family. Why? Because he was so trustworthy. As a child of God, who can trust you? Who wants to help somebody that is not trustworthy, who is not loyal? A disloyal being. Disloyalty smells. Somebody can smell it from far distance. You are not loyal to any cause. You are not loyal to anybody. It's just about yourself. People can see it. It's only you that doesn't know. See me, I don't want to be responsible to anybody. That is why nobody is helping you. They can see it. So everybody is running from you. This guy is so trustworthy, so loyal, that they, this man left everything in his care, including everything, everything, property, business, everybody, except for the food. He was trustworthy. He was reliable. He was faithful. He was smart. He was productive. And the latter part, verse 6, that's why I read it. Something was said briefly there, but so important. And I had to pay attention. You want to attract destiny helpers? Look at that part. Said, Joseph was a very handsome and well built young man. You want to attract a millionaire, a billionaire, people that will help you. You are looking like a beggar. Don't let dress away. Don't let this show on you. You may not have all the money. It shouldn't show on you. Walking about you, your hair, and your hair is not combed. You don't shave. You don't remember to polish your shoe. You don't, I mean, you just wear anything. Your beds are torn all over. You don't use pep. You don't look beautiful as a lady. All in the name that you are a Christian. All in the name that you are a brother. You, you can't even brush your teeth properly. You see all kind of attachment to your teeth. <laughs> Somebody can't come close to you. You're hoosing us. I mean, <laughs> ungodly smell. <laughs> Joseph was not so. He was a slave, but neat, beautiful, thick, handsome. A slave looking handsome. Well built. A slave. You that you are not a slave. Look at how you look. Anywhere you go, you wear slippers. What is the problem? You mean the house of the Lord? When we teach you, we will, you will not say listen. Why will you leave, wear slippers and leave your house? You don't know that your parents can, somebody can just look at you and like you and show interest and take up your re responsibility. Say, no, 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 no. Talking it and it's not my own. I cannot wear time. Wear time once in a while. Even it's on Sundays. Try 
I tell you, it's not comfortable for me to wear tie too. Wear tie. Once in a while. Just look neat. When you're wearing your native, look neat on it. Look smart. Now, let me show you a scripture before I move away from that. Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Select only strong. Look at, look at king looking for people to come into the palace. He told his servant, go out there. We have captured thousands, about 70,000 of Israelites. Go and look for a few of them. Select only strong. Look at. Strong, healthy, good-looking young men. Good-looking or good-looking. Look good, sir. I have found out. I had to tell my wife somebody. I said, I, I passed a lot of people. I said, I've not seen an ugly person. I said, but people who don't take good care of themselves. Nobody's ugly. I have found out. You look ugly when you don't take good care of yourself. Select only strong. See, people just never pass. Your parents is part of this thing. It's part of it. It's part of it. Sisters, it is not looking indecent. Drives, just never pass away from you. You can look beautiful and attractive and godly at the same time. To look indecent does not attract destiny and pass. It only attracts wolves who will come and devour you and leave you wounded. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men. He said, make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning. They are intelligent. They are, they are, look for them. Those are the people I want. I don't want just looking good, but empty upstairs. They don't read. The only thing they know is what everybody knows. The only thing they watch is what everybody watches. YouTube, Facebook. That is what they know. What everybody knows is what they know. You can't stand that like that. They are well versed in every branch of life and gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in the royal place. You know, anybody cannot come here. We don't relate with anybody. We relate with intelligent, good looking people. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. How many of them did they find? Just four. That's why I tell you if you are a person of the crowd, you are not ready for destiny. Out of like 70,000 people, they found just four. Daniel and his three friends. Destiny Epa, Destiny Epa, Destiny Epa, Destiny Epa. Are you prepared? Are you skilled? Are you intelligent? Are you excellent in everything you do? You want to assess the royal palace? How excellent are you? It was this scripture, Proverbs 22, 29. That says, seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall not stand before many men. He will stand before kings. How excellent are you? Be an asset. Be the reason things are working in your family. Be the reason things are working in modern church. Be the reason. Why we have a cutting hedge. Be the reason. Let us feel your impact. In your office, be the reason why they are making additional profit. Be the reason why things are better than the way they are. Not they are complaining about you. You don't attract helpers like that. Be the reason why this community is going to become a better community. This country is going to be a better country. Be the reason. Be an asset. Not a liability. Because becoming a liability can never attract destiny past to you. Number three. Be sacrificial towards people. Be sacrificial towards people. You must first be sacrificial in your relationships before it becomes beneficial. For instance, somebody can just come and write, I mean, I saw one person using the note, I, I believe that person was a froster, using the name of my contact, phone contact on WhatsApp, sent me a message. He said, he said uh, I mean, uh, in the uh, issue now, he told me some hundreds of thousands, as you said. The first question I asked, even as I was saying the name, I said, who are you? He didn't answer that question. You can ask me for such an amount of money. Even though I'm your pastor, have you invested such in my life and ministry? <laughs> have you invested such in my life and ministry? You know, like you go to bank, what you have in the, your account is 23,000. And you type 1 million naira there. Will it come out? Your investment there is just how much? 
23,000. You can't have 1 million. How much are you investing in your relationships? How sacrificial are you? You are not ready to sacrifice into any relationship, then forget it. How many of your friends have you helped? How many of your friends have, have you helped? Somebody was talking about to me how a friend was giving him millions for help. Why? Because he rendered some help years ago, some thousands of money. And the person did not forget. When the person could not afford it, stood up, did it, and now the person is aware with millions. You are not ready to help anybody. You are just, you are asking everybody, everybody, you are just, when you enter anybody's life, you are parasitic. Once anybody notices that you are, you are a parasitic person, they will run away from you. You want to take, you want to just take, you want to just take. When they are doing wedding, you are not part of it. You don't have money to travel and attend the wedding. You don't have gift to give. You don't always have. And you are still to have destiny helpers. You are not part of anybody's success story. Don't be parasitic in your relationship towards people. Invest in your relationships. Proverbs 18, 16, NLT. Giving a gift can open doors. It gives access to important people. Giving a gift can open doors. It gives access to important people. I was talking to somebody, who, I mean, one of my sons who called me, God was telling him to do something. I was telling him to connect to some certain people. And I thought, I said, one well, of no, this is what you do. Take money. Eh? <laughs> Take money. Because important people does not need you. Don't need you. And important people doesn't need you. It is you that need the important person. And if you go there saying that they should help you, they will just throw you out. If you need help, the help will come. But you first invest sacrificially. It will take years. Before you start getting anything. And it's not you that will ask them. They will just start with you. Gifts. That's why I quoted Luke 638. Give and it shall be given. It's not only in church. Oh. How much do you give to your family, your, some relatives in your family? Some of your friends. Even the little you have. Some of your colleagues. They are embarking on something. You all give birth. They are in the hospital. They are graduating. They are signing out. What, what did you give? Things are difficult for me this period. I heard you are signing out. I want to support 5,000. You may have to borrow it. You are establishing a relationship. You deal with how you pay, but that's your problem. You are digging something. That person will not forget it. Maybe behave as if uh, you will not forget it. You see, God, give me this neighbor, but what are you doing? Are you sacrificial towards anybody? If you are not sacrificial in your relationships, especially towards important and great people, you will never enter into their inner, inner, inner most room. That is the room you get to before you begin to find help. You don't need to tell them. You won't have to tell them. You don't have to tell them. I invest, like my spiritual father, Pastor Kredo Kumaya, before God showed me. I said, God, I need somebody that I will still get to that point. I began to pray. God, I need somebody I want to honor. Give me a man of God I want to honor. That I want to love and make happy. That was my prayer. I started praying. It took me almost a year to two years. But God showed him to me. I showed me the future. When I met him, you know, no talk, no nothing. The way he, he'll be discouraged. But I saw the future. God told me the future. God showed me the future. And I'm on my way. I know the future. So I can't be discouraged. I can't be stopped. 
Last time when I met her, I went with my wife with my son. I was sacrificing, my son was sacrificing, my wife was sacrificing. Yes. Sacrifice. Make him happy. Anytime he sees me, he's happy. When, when, when I thought everything, but later he started calling me son. 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 Invest in relationship. Began to send me things without me asking. Without me asking, began to send me things without me asking. The relationship you must invest in so much. It looks as if you are the pain end. But wait, wait for it when the time comes. Maybe the one that God has shown you, know that God has strategically brought that person into your life. I always tell young people at times, mentor me, you go there, mentor me. At times, when people come to me, I say, mentor, you tell me, right, this you guys, <laughs> yes. it's just serious. It's just, maybe it's something preaching. He has emotions. It's not serious. <laughs> and after a while, they'll feel that we don't get this type of No. People that actually follow they're no more than two, three, four. <laughs> we know them very well. We know everybody very well. Very well. That's how it is with everybody you are dealing with. And that's how it is with everybody you are dealing with. They know everybody. Please don't joke with God's giving connection in your life. Understand that people's value also increase with time. Take note of that. People's value increase with time. People's value. That's, all. That's what I tell you in church. Relate to yourselves. Because the person you are sitting with now, you can't, you can't imagine what that person will become in a year time, six months time, two years time, three years time, five years time. You don't know whether you are sitting next to the next billionaire. Come on. Take good advantage of people in your life around you. Thought you that. What time? Number four. Understand the power of honor in connecting to this power of honor. You will always get the attention of the ones you honor. Honor is respect in display, love in display. That's honor. Respect in display, love in display. Honor is respect in action. Do you have anyone you honor? Do your parents, you don't even honor them. You have to have people above you that you honor. For me, I have people above me. I don't only honor people that are above me. I have people on my level I honor. I have people below me that I honor. I know that. When I see me talking to them, you think they do better than me. You see me, do I respect them? Where I felt I respect everybody. Even people that are, that are just starting ministry that I send money to. You see me the way I talk to them. You think they do better than me. I honor everybody. But my honor for those that are ahead of me is out of this world. Like Apostle Joseph Sleeman. This year, she prayed for me. I went. My honor. Went to honor. Prayed for me. Talked to me. Honor him. Not just... When I see him in my house, anyway, I don't know him. I don't know him. Who do you all know? They can't offend me. This kind of you can't offend me. There's nothing they can say that can offend me. Nothing. Who do you all know in your life? Some of us want to assess the palace, but we are not mature. We are not sensitive. We are not mature. We are not sensitive. Do you know that your access into the palace will make you see the nakedness of the queen or the king? That way you see things if they give you access. Can you keep short? Have you not heard people say something like, ah, if you, I'm close to them. They'll be talking all kinds of things. You will, can see somebody that, that is why they can never prosper. People like that. Their pastor brought them so close. They saw things and they're telling everybody. <laughs> I know everything about him. I know everything about them. So people don't prosper. They are, I, I've had people that have brought clothes that I, I told them, I never. There's no man they can bring to me that even my house, they cannot enter. They come there, I said I'll talk to them. 
they mess up. You want to assess the palace, but you are not. You, see, there are things, if you are going to go with, and nobody is perfect, there are things you see that, there are secrets you see that they should die with you. It's not everything you see. It's not everything you see you talk about. By the grace of God in my life, there are people, great people that are, that are myself, that I've met in my young days, to date. All my contacts are in place. I didn't mess any of them up. I saw things. I know things. I think there was one of them I was telling Pastor and my wife one day. Then I discussed something very serious. I said, This thing, I saw it. But they are, they are, that is where I learned most of the most important virtue in this area of my life from. I was telling them. I saw it. Because I was in the other day. They allowed me. And I didn't mess up. Never affected my, my regard for them, my respect for them, my honor for them. Even when they are calling me, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mommy, how are you? Okay, ma. Okay, ma. Okay, ma. Okay, it's okay, ma. Okay, sir. It's okay, sir. I'm doing better. Okay, ma. Mommy, ah, no, no, no. Ah, don't need to tell me. Don't need to tell me. I have to call her something sacrificial. I don't need to be told. You say you honor somebody, I didn't bed, they don't know. You, your father's bed, you forget. Your mother's bed, you forget. The person you call your mentor, the bed they came, you forgot. Your, your, I mean, your lecturer's bed they came, you forgot. They are saying you're having F now. How will you not have F? <laughs> your HOD, you don't know the bed day. You don't know anything. You don't give anything. <laughs> Like when I drive on the road, I just have money once in a while. I just give police. I have my papers are correct. Give police. People need to be appreciated. Appreciate people that are working. Not just the police that say they are paying. I want you to look at the economy of this country. Be nice. See your lecturer. Be nice to everybody. See police. How much are they paying them? You need to drive. Uh, sir, take. Encourage them. They'll pass you. They'll be happy with you. Your lecturer, you're teaching every day. Say, government to pay them one thing. You need to try. That professor is my mentor. You don't know the bad day. You don't appreciate them. You don't know anything. Christmas time, nothing. Festive period, nothing. You are never part of anything they are doing. They know, I don't know. I have uncle. They are not helping me. How would they help you? Even the bad day, don't call. You don't do anything. You don't send any gifts. Every time you can't send. Happy New Year. It's when you have forgotten that two days after that you send message. <laughs> I expect that they will help you. Number five, be wise to resolve conflicts in your relationships. Every relationship will be tested with conflicts. Every relationship. Ah, we don't have any quarrel at all. We understand each other. Means you are, both of you are the outer layer. You don't know anything yet. You are not open up for each other. You are not close with each other. That's why there's no conflict. But once you are actually close, be conflict. Be wise. Some of us, small thing like this, you have destroyed your relationship. Don't talk to me again. Don't talk to me again. Don't mention my name. I don't want to have anything with you for the rest of your When you see me, don't greet me. Off my night, off my life. Delete my number. I delete it. I delete it. Delete my number from your phone. Delete it now, now, now. <laughs> delete it now. Delete it. Delete it. No. Every conflict, except they are not supposed to be there in the first place. Even if they are not supposed to be there, there are ways you can dissolve relationship. Even your own blood brother. Say, will not greet each other again. Just, just go your own. I go my own way. Don't call me again. Your own blood sister, go your way like this. I go by. Don't call my number. Well, forget the name. That be no. Learn how to resolve conflict. I was shocked when I was was in Bible college. What did I was doing my masters or something? Was it my masters? Yes. In theology, we we're going to have a course that shocked me. And that course, the title of that course was conflict resolution in church. Huh? They are teaching us how to resolve conflict in church. They told us there are going to be conflict in church. There will be fights. There will be quarrel. And they told us when the conflict will come. Eh? Say, if you're a single pastor, once you get married, church will have conflicts. Eh? 
Church will almost scatter. This is how we're going to solve it. When a church is growing and people start coming, church will have conflicts. When you are building property, you are buying land, you are building, there's going to be what? Conflict. At different, different levels of life, even in marriage, there will be conflicts. In fact, marriage conflict is every day. It's every day. No, it's every day, every day. It's every day. Anybody that tells you it's every day, we just that we know how to resolve it. Now, now we we'll resolve it. It's every day. That marriage is every day. I used to say that one time until I read somebody's book. Or my, I said, ah, I thought it was only me that I had to teach my people. When they say daily, ah, I said, thank God. I had a witness from a very powerful source. I thought it was only me. <laughs> Even on the altar, once they were, <laughs> ah, on the altar of God. That's marriage. That's my conflict. But if you see any great relationship that is moving forward, there are people who understand how to resolve their conflicts. They master to resolve conflicts easily. Master it. Master it. That's why Jesus teaches forgiveness. That's why I can see forgiveness in the Bible everywhere. Because he knows that the people that will help you will offend you. The people that are supposed to help your destiny. There are times they will do, in fact, the first, your first meeting, they may say something that wants to scatter your head. Forgive. Move on. Let the relationship go on. Stop fighting everybody. In every relationship, there are benefits. And in every relationship, there are weaknesses. Therefore, you manage the weaknesses and enjoy the blessing of that relationship. Simple. Understand that no one is perfect. Stop telling people that you don't need them or anything from them. Kill that language. Ah! I don't think anybody can say that here again. I don't need you. I don't need you. Don't say that again. Ever. It is not wise. It's not a wise statement. Finally, be appreciative always. Don't be an ingrate. Be appreciative. Thanks every time. Thank God. Be appreciative to God. Thank you. Thank you. I relate with my spiritual father, my dad, Father Gode Komaya, almost every time. And when, when I meet him face to face, when I send the message, one of the things I like to say, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your covering. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you. Every time. It doesn't finish from my mouth. It doesn't finish. Learn how to say thank you. Thank you to your father. Thank you. Somebody gives you what I say thank you. Is this all you can send to me? 5,000 in this economy? Daddy, what did you send? 5,000 in this economy? You can never buy any of my handouts. <laughs> you can try that with your dad, but don't try it with anybody else. You your dad will not be happy with you. Learn how to say thank you. 1,000, thank you. 500, thank you. Okay, I'll think about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Or give me the privilege to talk, talk to you about it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, be a grateful person. Learn how to remember what they did for you yesterday, two weeks ago, six months ago, one year ago. Remember. Thank you. Tell somebody sitting next to you, say thank you to that person. Look at another person, say thank you. Look backward and say to somebody, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Give God a big hand this morning.